up, y'all? Welcome back to Hollywood Interviews. We're here with Chadrick Whitmar. Uh, dude, you are awesome. Thank you for coming on. Um, what? Uh, how's your day going? Uh, everything's been going good. I had a pretty good day. Um, I uh, hung out with my girlfriend a little bit and then worked on some stuff. Uh, I've been trying to get a feature film written. I've been trying to get a short film written. Uh, just working on a bunch of stuff at the moment. Just got a lot going on. Really. Awesome. Well, we really thank you for taking the time to jump on our show. Um, so Chad, how, Chadrick, how did you, uh, how'd you get started in uh, film and television? Okay. The way I got started was the fact that I wanted to do it ever since I was a little kid. And this is something I told somebody else. I actually used to run around when I was three years old and say I wanted to be like Burt Reynolds. And I used to watch that show with my mom when I was a kid. I think it was called Evening Shade, I believe. Yep. I, I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. Yep. And um, I always wanted to be like him. So in middle school, I started doing theater. And in high school, I went on to do theater and um, in high school as well as community theater. So it was something I always wanted to do. And then I never had the nerve after that to really get into it. So about a year ago, I started going to acting classes and everything just took off from there. I started writing again and that's how everything started just by making that initiative to start taking acting classes again. That's excellent. Yeah, that's 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 absolutely fantastic, Chadwick. Thank you. Um, this next part is a, more of a statement and then a question. Um, I am a huge like 90s country music fan. And whether you, I'm not assuming that you like country music, but if they ever did like a, a, a biopic or a, a movie about a country singer from the 90s, you can play that role well. I hear it in your voice, your speaking voice. You sound like every country star I grew up with in the 90s, but you can nail that role. I don't know if you're insulted or not, but that's like an Oscar situation there for you. I'll write it and uh, you could be in it. Um, so you've done a lot of great stuff and you've got some stuff coming up. Um, do you have a piece of advice um, to somebody who may have just snagged their very first gig or they just tip their toes into the acting scene, um, but they want to sort of take that to the next level? What do you think after you start a good next level would be for, for someone that's watching, they want to sort of follow in the footsteps of someone like you? Uh, I would say, number one, don't give up and don't get complacent. Oh, good. If you get complacent with uh, something like this, it's not going to work out for you. So I would have to say, don't get complacent and definitely don't fear rejection because that's something you're going to face all the time. You can you can audition a thousand times and book one thing, but just don't give up on it. Chadrick, how do you deal with with um, overcoming the the no's uh, and dealing with with that? I just honestly, I've just gotten mm -hmm. to a point in my life where I've matured enough to know that things like this are going to happen. And uh, when I if I were younger, getting into this, I would take it very hard. I'd be very hard on myself, but I just think since I cast people and do stuff like that, I just think that I just wasn't the right one for it. That wasn't nope. that precision for me and just move on. That's a hell of a perspective. Um, I, I'll, I'll say cheers to that on this fine St. Patty's Day. That's well said, sir. Well said. <laughs> Chadrick, so you are a director yourself. What what genre? So if you could just go right into um, whatever genre you want. So you've got, let's say, a limited funds or a bigger budget. What does that type of movie uh, look like to you? What would you want to pick as the genre? I mean, I'm a horror fan. There it is. Oh. <laughs> I'm a horror fan through and through. And I write thrillers, horror uh, the feature I'm writing is uh, drama, but it's got a, a dark theme to it. And uh, I would definitely do horror because that's that's what I want to uh, be as a director. That's what I want to be as a writer. That's what I want to be as an actor. I want to be just 
in in the horror genre. If we're not all together, you, me, and Dustin working on a horror project in the next year or a half, uh, we're doing something wrong because that is exactly what we're we're all about too. And let's just put our minds together and knock some creepy shit, create some creepy stuff in this world. Actually, I think that one of the seasons of uh, the entire season of uh, Hollywood interviews will just do horror actors and directors and stuff. Because man, I could talk horror all day long, dude. That's so cool. I've got a bunch of pictures behind me. You can't really see them. I thought that it would be visible in here, but I've got mm -hmm. like a last house on the left. Uh, my first, I got one, my first movie, uh, Barnes Funeral Home, which wasn't the greatest movie. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. It was my first one and I did everything <laughs> for it. So it wasn't the greatest. Um, I've got The Shiny. I've got uh, Devil's Rejects, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock with Anthony Perkins. <laughs> Dude, that's what's up, man. You got some taste. I, I, I knew I liked you before I met you virtually just now, and that seals the deal right there for me, man. Okay. I, 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 my train of thought's back. All right. So what I was going to say earlier was, what do you think is more difficult, uh, working on a short film that's yours that is your baby, uh, is everything to you, or is it working on a feature film um, that you didn't write, but you've been hired to direct, you know what I mean? So like, in your opinion, which one do you think would be more difficult? Doing the feature that somebody else wrote. You think that would, would be? be more difficult because don't, when, when I'm, uh, I've got a friend, Derek, actually, uh, Derek Bailey, and I've let him read the stuff that I write and he's like, he's basically like a mentor to me for writing. And uh, he always tells me that when I write, I write from a director point of view. So I already know what I want as I'm writing. So to do somebody else's material, I don't know exactly what their vision is, but I can make it, I can, I can make it my vision, but it's easier if I write it and produce it myself. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, to me, yeah, it's a lot. It's harder for me to do other people's work than it is to do my own work, uh, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So you mentioned writing, uh, Chadwick. What's what's your uh, your writing style? So when you need to just get get the script done, get the idea fleshed out, are you a just shut yourself off and listen to music kind of guy? Um, what what gets you there creatively uh, as a writer? I write in silence, actually. Um, and basically what I do is I'll come up with a basis of an idea, and then I just sit down in front of the computer, and then once I, once I put that INT or that EXT into the computer, my brain just automatically just starts flowing with it. Yeah. I don't really know how to explain it to, to the greatest detail. But it's like, once I put that in there and I'm like, okay. And I'm like, okay, yeah, here we go. That's cool. Yeah. Dang, awesome. I'm, the, I'm the opposite. Like when I'm writing something or a skit, I, I have to have music playing. I can't write in silence. That's because then my brain starts just going everywhere. It's, I, it's, I'm weird. I know. But uh, yeah, I always have to have music playing in the background. Um, what do you, uh, do you ever get writer's block? What do you do when you get writer's block? I do. I call it an activity, but what I do when I get writer's block is I come up with like two or three characters and try and make a short out of it. And then it kind of revolves or uh, evolves back into what I'm writing essentially. But I just, I'm like, okay, I've got three characters. What can I do with three characters? Are they three women? Are they three men? Are they two women and one man? And I'll kind of bounce back and forth with this whole idea of how many people I've got to work with. And then I'll start my, making like a story out of it. Sometimes I do write um, like a short story and then adapt that short story into a script. I, that's what I used to do all the time. But now, ever since I started the Malcolm series, I'm just flowing with each episode, you know, back to back. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking of the Malcolm series, uh, it's by far my favorite thing you've done. Um, I'm, I love the concept of it. Where did you, where'd you get the idea for that? Did it just come to you or? Well, I had a friend, I have a friend with schizophrenia 
and he was talking to me one day and he just was sharing some things with me or whatever. And uh, I kind of sat on that for a little while. And I was like, you know what? I want to make a story about a schizophrenic man that's a serial killer. And I was like, wonder how I can make this go. And actually what happened was I met Alex. We met at a screening event. And he was like, uh, write something for him because I get cast as these certain roles and I want to branch out, you know. And he said, I'll write something for you. I was like, sure, of course. So uh, Malcolm One was originally meant to be just a short film, and that was it. And then it turned into, I got an idea. I was like, well, what if two detectives were on the chase for him, you know? And then it turned into something else. And then now I'm like wrapped up with seven of them. That's how many I'm going to make in all. But the way I got into it was uh, talking to a friend of mine. And then I just came up with the idea of the serial killer part. I said, this is, this is nice. I was like, I, I think I can write something like this. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a great. Thank you. Yeah, y'all got it. Definitely check it out. We'll link it in the description of this video because it's so amazing. I love it. It's really, really, okay. really it's fantastic. I could not agree more. Um, so, Chadwick, uh, where are you from? I'm actually, I was born in Douglasville in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, and then I moved to, uh, I don't know if y'all know where Clinton, South Carolina is. Oh, yeah. Yep. Like Lawrence area. I moved mm -hmm. there for a few years and then I basically grew up in Blue Ridge, Georgia. Know where Blue Ridge is too. I'm from Silva, North Carolina, uh, just in the mountains, Western North Carolina. So I'm very familiar with that area. Um, so you've, lived in and around Georgia, um, you know, in the Atlanta area. What is what does Hollywood coming to Atlanta, Georgia mean to you? It means that one day I'll have more opportunities. Right now, I I really really honestly to be real with you. Yeah. Um, it really I really don't think about it because I still always want to be an independent filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, of course, I'd like to make money from doing what I'm doing, but the independent style is something that I really care about. And the big budget stuff that they bring, I really don't care too much about. It. I appreciate your honesty. That's 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 awesome. Do you find that because as an overall um, in all the news media and everything, just the spotlight is right on Atlanta. Do you think that? that helps you in a way as an independent filmmaker to maybe connect with with more like-minded people like yourself because of the fact that they're moving to Atlanta? I think so because a lot of independent people are also moving to Atlanta because a lot of people do background work and a lot of people do other independent work and stuff like that and I've done background on a couple of projects and uh, met some great people um, so I, I think that's really what it, what it means to me the most is that uh, I don't think the independent film world is going to ever go anywhere. Yeah. No, yeah, I, actually, I hope it never does. I hope it never does. I think it's I actually going to explode more uh, with, you know, I think with streaming services, eventually they're going to start coming to us for their content. And, you know, what, well, even now there's services where you can just go upload your stuff to these services and if they like it they'll put it on their streaming services so i think oh, yeah. going forward you know these streaming services are definitely going to be coming to independent filmmakers more and more and more of our content is going to be getting out there it's it's just i think right now is the most exciting time in film if in the past 40 years you know preach so, baby preach, uh, <laughs> preach. <laughs> hell yeah um yeah so uh chadrick Tell tell the people what you got work what you, what you working on what's on the horizon for you man. Okay, right now, uh, right now what I'm focused on doing is um, I don't think I've told anybody this. I may have told a couple of people, but we're filming breaking part news. Four. Breaking news right here. We're filming part four uh, April third. So part four will be coming out around April, maybe May, and um, my ultimate objective is to, by the end of the year, start writing the feature film for Malcolm. Ooh. That's, 
Yeah. Just let us know when the casting call is going to be. Just throw it to us early because I'd, I'd, I'd drive to Atlanta for that in a heartbeat. <laughs> All right, I'll definitely, I'll definitely let you know. Yeah, that's that's really exciting. Oh wow, um, that's awesome. So now, okay, well, um, well, I guess you don't want to, maybe you don't want to spill anything else about it. But uh, since Malcolm is going to be a seven part series, are you the feature? Is that going to be its own thing, or will that have something to do with with the the seven parts uh, mini series you're doing now? Or it'll come off based. Uh... I'm, I've got the fourth one down, you know, like I said, we're going to film it on the third. And then the fifth one, I know what it's going to be about. I know what the sixth one's going to be about. And I know what the ending of seven is going to be about. So I want to kind of piggyback off the ending of seven to create the feature. That's nice. So awesome. That's the way to do it. Oh, that is so daggum awesome. I'm excited for it. I'm ready. Um, yeah, I remember, uh, Alex, uh, this would have been, well, it's when you did the first one, Alex, uh, you know, uh, DM me, it was like, dude, I, I need you to watch what I just did. Uh, so I watched it and I was like, dude, holy hell, that is so, that's something, that's something special right there. Plus he's a phenomenal actor. So to have him, you know, it, it, as the lead in your series is, is just elevates it more too. So that that's awesome. Um, well, Chadrick, thank you for stopping by and talking with us. Uh, this has been a blast. We definitely are going to want to have you back on, uh, especially when you finish the series and start the feature. We'd love to talk to you more about that. Uh, so, okay. yeah, thank you for coming on. And thank you, everyone in the audience, for watching as well. Uh, we love you guys. We hope you click that like button and subscribe. And Chadrick, Dustin, Donut Go Changing. We're waiting for that joke the whole time. We'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>